What's up, everybody? This is Billy Ward at the Action Network, taking a quick look at the UFC 304 card with some early bets that I'm looking to make. We've got two title fights on the UFC 304 card, both of them rematches. We'll get into each of them in a little bit, starting with the main event between Bilal Muhammad and Leon Edwards. Kind of everybody knows the Bilal Muhammad story at this point. He's won nine fights in a row, 10 fights without a loss. The one exception was a no contest against Leon Edwards a couple years back where Leon Edwards poked him in the eye in the second round. Fight didn't get made. Now we've got Leon installed as a minus 250 favorite in their main event. Feels a little bit steep to me. Yes, Leon won the first round in their first fight. Yes, he's the younger fighter. But he wasn't dominant. These, these guys have fought fairly similar level of competition. They're at a fairly similar place. I'm not sure how the cardio angle is going to play out here. You know, normally we like to think that guys who rely on their wrestling are going to tire out a little bit more. But I do think Bilal has some good staying power. One angle I really like for this one is Bilal Muhammad, the plus five and a half point spread at DraftKings. Basically, that's the sum total of all the rounds if it goes to a decision added together, and then you add five and a half to Bilal. Basically, that's just a bet that he keeps it within a round or two, depending on the judges. Edwards, in his title run, has not really demolished people or put people away. You know, the Colby fight was kind of boring, nothing much happened. He finished Usman in the comeback situation and to win the title. Since then, both of his wins have gone to a decision. Bilal's a very durable guy. I think it hits the judges here. Over four and a half is minus 230. You're basically just betting on Bilal to steal a round or two at minus 110. Other title fight, Tom Aspinall and Curtis Blades. Also a rematch with the first fight that ended in strange circumstances. That was, of course, Tom Aspinall tearing his ACL 15 seconds into the fight with Curtis Blades. Obviously, that didn't tell us anything, right? We don't know what was going to happen. There's, I think, four or five total strikes landed. Nothing to tell us there. Aspinall, pretty prohibitive favorite here. He's minus 355 with Curtis Blades coming back at plus 280. And honestly, it makes sense. You know, Blades' last loss was to Sergey Pavlovich, who Aspinall made look really, really bad. Aspinall, by far the better well-rounded fighter. Younger, has more tools in his toolbox. The one angle I like on Curtis Blades, though, it's the decision-only market at DraftKings. Those are bets that get refunded if either fighter wins by finish. My logic here is, if this fight goes 25 minutes, it's probably Curtis Blades using his wrestling to stay on top for the majority of it. Obviously, this fight is, or this bet is far more likely to get refunded than it is to actually settle. But for a little bit of a sprinkle early in the week, minus 120 odds, I think you can do a lot worse than Curtis Blades in the decision-only market. Elsewhere on the main card, we have the return of Patty the Batty Pimblet. He has taken on the newly minted King Green. The fighter formerly known as Bobby Green is now legally King Green. Fight's going off is about a pick. I'm pretty close lines. They've moved back and forth either way. I actually like Patty Pimblet here. There's a couple reasons why. One, he is eight and a half-ish years younger. We know the stats on younger fighters, especially in these lighter weight classes where speed and reaction time means so much. Two, while King Green has had a good run the last few fights, he's beaten two 40-year-olds, lost to Jalen Turner by a bad knockout, and then he had a quick knockout of Grant Dawson. I don't want to take anything away from that knockout, but it's a little bit fluky. And just the amount of damage that King Green has taken, he's going to be 38 in about a month. Not great. It's a little bit of a bet on Patty Pimblett to take his career a bit more seriously than we've seen from him in the past, but I think the long layoff has given him time to do so. You can still get plus 105. The line has dropped precipitously. He was as high as plus 160 at various points in the opening. So if you're listening to this, you still see a plus next to Patty Pimblett's name. That is a bet I would make as soon as you can because it's not going to stay there all week. One more main card fight that I've already made a bet on is the middleweight bout between Christian Leroy Duncan, CLD, and Gregory Rodriguez. This is a fight that came together a little bit on short notice. CLD was supposed to fight somebody else. There was an injury. Still about three weeks for Gregory Rodriguez, so it's not a full training camp by any stretch. But it is a fight where he's had some time to lose the weight. Weight cut shouldn't be a big deal. We don't have to worry about that stuff. CLD has had a pretty easy path to the top here. The opponents he's beaten in, in route to his 3-1 and one record are 5-11 and 11 in the UFC. He's mostly a striker. The only other good striker they gave him, Armin Petrosian, outstruck him pretty easily. It's a scary bet on G-Rod here at plus 120. G-Rod is very chinny. We've seen him knocked out badly a couple times, but he's also an elite grappler. So if he can get inside on Christian Leroy Duncan and take him down, he should be a massive favorite as soon as this hits the mat. I wouldn't bet him at, you know, pick him price or with a minus in front of it. Plus 120 on Gregory Rodriguez. Basically just betting on him to shoot once each round. Feels like a fairly safe pick at plus money. Another one that's starting to move down a little bit, so get on that one as soon as you can. For more UFC picks, be sure to tune into our full-length UFC betting preview podcast with Sean Zerillo and I that airs this Friday in all of your podcast feeds.
Thanks, everyone. Good luck.